Good morning, everybody. Today, we're going to go through a couple of um, utilities within PS Suites, namely going through searches, how you can create your own search and pull stats from the EMR based on those search results. So the place that we're going to first begin our search is in the patient record. Now, you don't actually need to open up a patient for this to work. What you can do is click on records and open up a blank template with no actual record assigned to it and click on settings in the top of the patient record and come all the way down here to edit searches. Now you'll only have abilities to edit searches if you have access to view all information within the patient chart. So if you have limited um, view, viewing privileges within a patient chart, you may not be able to create a search. So this may be a conversation you need to have with an administrator. Now on the left-hand side of my edit searches uh, window, what I have here are a number of searches that, are, that have been created by someone um, within my team or the system. Uh, and these are the preloaded searches here. So if I wanna create my own search, I'm gonna click on this button right here where it says add search. Now this window transforms and the first thing that it's asking me to do is to name my search. So then I'm gonna name this my test search one. So we need to ask this, uh, the, we need to tell this window, what exactly are we looking for? You know, what kind of things are we trying to search up here? What kind of stats, what kind of information? And this box here is where we can add that line of criteria. So if you notice right here, there's a button that says add line. If I click that, another window is gonna pop up with a number of different options. Now this first column that we're seeing here, this gives me a number of different options in which I can search information within the EMR. Um, you know, the first option here is demographics. So an example of that is in this following window is I want to look up everybody who meets the category of being age that is greater than or equal to the number I put in here. So I can say I want to look at everybody who is greater than the age of 19. And I press OK. And that's my only line of criteria. So we'll do a test search just to show you what that looks like. Now, this is looking through the entire patient list in our system. For people who have their demographic age set to over 18 years old, and it produces that list for me. Pretty neat. So we can alternate, or sorry, we can alter this criteria list to, what, to display you know, whatever kind of information we're looking for. I can make changes to this age. I can even add another line of criteria and say, I'm looking for everybody who's age 19, which is the first line that I have, but also go even further and say, I'm looking for somebody who is male. So our criteria now becomes, I'm doing a search for patients that are over 19 and their sex is male. Let's try that out. And we narrow down our search a little bit more to produce our list. Now searches can be very versatile and I'm gonna delete these lines of criteria here and I can even edit this one to change it with something else if I'm looking for something a little bit more broad. This can be used for looking up immunizations like COVID-19 vaccinations. A uh, number of times done, you know, if you're looking for somebody who has, or a list of patients who have more than two doses, um, so long as you've been recording it in the immunization section of the patient's cumulative patient profile, no problem. But we're in a sandbox right now, and I don't think we have any actual COVID um, immunizations inputted into any of these fake charts, so that won't pull anything up for me. But I can look up things like vitals, I can look up things from lab results to CPP problems. And CPP problems is essentially referencing this problems list in the patient's uh, CPP. 
And it's a valuable place to hold information. For example, the idea of the problem list is if you're putting in the patient's actual diagnosed problems, like perhaps they have diabetes or they have hypertension, um, we can easily create a search for everybody in the chart who has the word diabetes in their problems list. And that's a great way for us to quickly generate a list of diabetics within our system. And we could say grandpa, mommy, and PSS Evan are all labeled as being diabetic in their problem list. So keep that in mind when you're putting in these strategies for um, how, to, how to pull out information based on people's problems that you need to report upon. And one of the more valuable ways that we utilize searches is to summarize data th that we take from an encounter form or some sort of tracking tool that we've implemented within our team. So for example, I'm gonna change this line of criteria. Um, actually, I'll clear it first, just so we could start from scratch. I'm gonna add a line of criteria. And in this example, I want, and I'll show you right from the very beginning what this form looks like. And I'm gonna cancel this. Oh, it's making me add a line of criteria before I can close this. Just give me one moment. Put an arbitrary placeholder number here for now. Now I'm gonna pull up a random fake patient here. And it's this home care tracking form that I'm interested in showing. So the scenario is, you know, my team as a home care branch of the health center, we're utilizing this home care tracking form to input data that summarizes kind of what we're doing within our clinic. So my staff would enter in this home care tracking form, enter in what, where that location of the service was delivered, what kind of service we delivered, you know, kind of expanding upon what we did, how long we did it, one hour, and then any other supplemental information, supplemental information, here are my notes. Perfect. And I can even change the date of that if I want to. Let's say it was yesterday. Perfect. So this is the form that we use to track our information in this scenario. So I want to figure out how do I summarize all of this data for all of the patients that are getting this service using this form. So we start in our searches here. And we add a new search and we're going to call this our home care service delivery. And it doesn't really matter what you call it. It's just easy for you to, to go back and reference the search. Because again, once you've created the search one time, it saves in here. So you don't have to build this every time. So I'm going to add my line of criteria that says I'm looking for a specific custom form in everybody's chart. And I've got to come and find the correct title of that form I'm specifically referencing, which is the home care tracking form. And I know it's the home care tracking form because if I move all these windows, that's the title of that form. And I'll back up in a second, but I just want to show you that we're looking for the home care tracking form. And for this line of criteria, or for this um, instance, I'm looking for any time that entire custom form has been put into a patient's chart more than zero times. So this is telling me, you know, as long as there's this service form in somebody's chart, I want a list of those patients. So I'll press OK. That's my line of criteria. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to perform my search to see how many people have this home care tracking form in their chart more than zero times. So when I run that search, it produces my list for me. Now it's not telling me a whole lot in terms of what kind of services I delivered, but what we do is we can utilize a flow sheet that is that we've created that mimics that custom form to spit out that data for us very nicely. So in this window, what I can do is click on report come down to export patients. And it's very nice to use export 
tab delimited using a flow sheet because we do have a flow sheet for this form that mimics the data on that all out of all the fields that are on that form. So if I click on export patient data and I'm going to save this onto my desktop and we'll call it test home care data. And I'm going to save that. And now it's asking me which flow sheet are you going to use to export that information? Now I'm going to look for the one that says home care service form or sorry, home care tracking form. Again, because that's the name of the form that I'm referencing, home care tracking form. Okay, so I'm going to let it run its thing. We're exporting that data. Perfect. So now I can leave PS Suites and transition into my database management system like Excel here. And open this up as a blank new sheet. And what I can do from here is open up my file folder. And I'm going to look for that document that I just saved, which was my test home care data. That's the document that saved from PS Suites based on that export we just did. So I'm going to drag it, bring it into Excel, drop it. And look at all that data that just dropped in here. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit just to give you an idea of what that looks like. And if I highlight all of this data, what I can do is create a table, highlight it, press Control T on your keyboard, which is the insert table button. It's asking, do my does my table have headers? Yep, my headers came in properly. Press OK. Now what I can do is I can filter the data however I want, and I can remove all the blanks, spaces to make it look nice. This is all the data. And it really helps me tell a story about what kind of services are being delivered within my clinic. And things like this, the hours here, what I can do is run some functions to say, I am looking to count up all of these fields to see how much time my team has allocated to these services. And in fact, for assisted living services, my team has allocated eight total hours towards that service. So furthermore, even what we can do here is we can create what we have, what we call pivot tables in terms of clicking on this insert button, pivot table. And we can put this on our existing worksheet to add a table. And notice on the left-hand side, or on the right-hand side rather, I've got this pivot table field option. And with that data that's referenced up on top here, I can manipulate this to create a more comprehensive table without really going into too much uh, data analytics here. So what I can do is I can select um, the provider, for example, and count how many interactions they've had. So 19 for in this case, I can put in their category of service to see how many times I've delivered uh, assisted living, nursing services, personal care services, et cetera. And it's a quick way to tally those numbers. And you can break it off into um, hours allocated into each of those services, whatever it is that you need to kind of really sift through the data for. But utilizing pivot tables is a great way to really help you trans, uh, sorry, to sparse that data up a little bit more and get what you're looking for, for your reports. So keep that in mind. Now that we have all of our data from PS Suites into Excel, what we can do is we can play with it. We can manipulate the data. We can get it to tell us a story to deliver the reporting requirements that we need to deliver to our funders.